Hey folks, good day to you. Hope you're doing well. I'm going to do my trade review for today. I had one trade and it was a winner. So take a look here. Entered the position at 10.04 and I sold the 282 put with the 280 put as protection. Collected $52, so $50 minus commission. Closed the position at 10.48. You can see my commission was higher on the close there because I got out at the bid essentially. I hit the bid to get out. So I'm gonna talk about that real quick at the end of the video. But generally, I'm gonna prefer legging out instead of closing the position all in one shot because a lot of the time I want to cover the short option pretty relatively quickly anyways. So uh, definitely it makes sense to leg out instead of try to close it in one shot because the smart routing systems are not perfect. So yeah, so let's go over it real quick here. So generally what I was watching was the lows of Friday on the majority of names. So let's take a look at SPY here and we'll just do a replay on the first few minutes of trading here. You can see that we opened up below the low. Actually, no, it was right about it. It was 282.40 was the low of Friday. Now watching it on a majority of names to gauge the probability of how likely it is to break, obviously. So the tech sector, financial sector and everything. What happened was we didn't break it. We moved up for like a two-legged move to start, caught the moving average, and then pulled back from the moving average. Now you can see there was a little bit of resistance here. If you're watching the bid and ask and the tape, there was a seller right around this 284 to start, and he was there for the majority part of the morning until they finally lifted it. One thing I've noticed is that the financial sector and the tech sector are still playing this seesaw game. So if you look at what the financial sector did, the first move was down today, and the tech sector, the first move was kind of up. So they were kind of reversing. And then when the financial sector was moving up, the tech sector was moving down sideways. And then they both finally decided to move up together. And that's kind of what gave the fuel to the S&P 500 to move higher here. So generally, I was giving the benefit of the doubt to the bulls this morning because uh, we do know that we need considerable weakness in all the major sectors in order for SPY to see weakness. So default to being bullish uh, when everybody's looking bearish in this market. Everybody's so fundamentally bearish that that's what kind of gives the fuel to the market to go higher and higher, unfortunately. At least that's one way of seeing it. So look at the replay function. I entered the trade here on this pullback to this 283 general area, and I was looking for a higher low um, generally and expecting the low of the day to hold. So my plan for getting out of the trade was going to be if 213 was going to break on the queues, I would have covered the short put and stayed long, uh, the long put in that case. But we never got that, so I stayed in the position and was just watching how the sectors were reacting. So you can see that once the offer lifted at 284, it still got rejected, but we just kind of consolidated on some light volume here. And it was looking quite bearish, in fact, because you can see that we were getting, we were making higher highs with not much follow through. So that's sort of a bearish signal, right? But not necessarily either, because that attracts shorts to enter the trade. And they always, um, you're looking at the trade in a way where, oh, it looks like the perfect place to take a short. But in reality, when too many people are doing that, that's what forces the market to go higher and seek that liquidity. So you can see that we were chopping around this area for a a long while until we finally got this clear break and that volume that uh, came up with it. So generally you have to be watching the cues around the uh, 214.70 area because that was around the gap fill and we consolidated from that area and then pushed higher and now we're even pushing above that 215.50 area. So bears are not happy today that's for sure. So I exited right here right after the big push at 1048 and that's pretty much it. That was the trade. And then after I just um, was working on my TWS layout, and I'll show you what I did here real quick. So I've actually got three tapes with three ladders. And basically this is gonna be my general view of the tape essentially on the major market sectors here. So I've got my implied volatility on the left here, and I've got three tapes and three ladders. So just one last point here, uh, in regards to closing uh, positions, if you trade combo orders or spreads, I would highly recommend you to consider legging out of positions. Now, it makes sense to, for example, if you trade a small account, it makes sense to fill a combo order as the combo, right? You fill, fill it as a combo like I did today. There's nothing wrong with that. 
and you kind of limit into the trade and, and you look for the market to kind of tick in your favor and that's what's going to make your order a liquidity adding order so essentially you won't get charged a higher commission if you just sweep the offer you will always get charged a slightly higher commission now in regards to getting out of the position if you feel like you need to get out quicker using the smart routing system to close the spread in one shot is generally not the best option because I was watching the price here and obviously there was a risk that we could see a drastic pullback at that moment. So I wanted to close my position relatively quickly and I was playing around with orders and the spread was only three cents wide, but it wasn't filling. For the future, I'll definitely choose to close the short option first close the long option after. So that's the general idea. Again, legging out of the position. All right, guys. So that's going to be it for today. I wish you a great day and all the best. Take care. Manage your risk. Bye.